Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to use the Adjust Color Curves tool that's right up here under the Enhance menu and come down to Adjust Color and Adjust Color Curves right there. I'll also be showing you how to use the Color Curves tool that's part of the Elements Plus plugin as well. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and also click on all those share buttons. And to make sure you don't miss out on any videos in the future, make sure you click on that subscribe button as well. To learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training courses and you'll find links right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Adjusting color curves in an image is a great way to bring a lot more vibrancy to an image, make it look a lot nicer. Left over here is the original and the right side is the adjusted version. Notice that I have darkened the background down just a hair, just a little bit. I've lightened up the highlights just a little bit, but I've also darkened down the mid-tone values in here, which gives her more contour to this girl's face. You can see right there, especially on the cheekbones in here almost flat looking over here, much more contour over there by darkening down those mid-tones. And you can do that kind of stuff using the curves control. Let's first take a look at the default curves control that comes with Photoshop Elements. I'm just going to close this file down. We don't need that one now. And let's just lock that in place. There we go. So let's go up to Enhance, come down to Adjust Color, and Adjust Color Curves. And this brings up the default color curves tool. And this little windows in here, you can see before here and your after over here. And it's fairly basic. The actual curve part about this is this diagram over here, which will show you kind of a curve between these different controls. Let's go ahead and walk ourselves through these things. First off, the easiest way to do this is to use the selective style down here. Let's go over one of these defaults. Here's a backlit style. That obviously doesn't work well. Dark and highlights also doesn't improve. There's the default setting. Increase contrast, takes it way too far. Increase midtones, also not what I'm looking for. Light and shadows doesn't do too well, and solarizes just weird. So let's put this back to the default. Now notice over here, when I make a change here on selective style, you'll see a change on the curves, but you won't see any change on the controls in here. So these don't actually reset the controls, it just puts in kind of a default beginning curve. Now none of those do what I want. What I want to do is I want to darken down the shadows a little bit. So come down here to shadows. So I'll move this to the left a bit like that. And I kind of darken down my shadows just a touch. Just a little darker. It helps to separate her from the background. And then mid-tone contrast. I want a little more contrast on the mid-tones in there. And midtone brightness just a little bit less there, just darken the midtones down. And you can see it's beginning to make a curved shape over here on this window. We can bring our highlights up a little bit. And we can get pretty close. Much snappier, better looking image in here by using this adjustment. So here's our original, and then here's this adjustment. And that's where you use this curves control. You can adjust your highlights, midtone, brightness and contrast, and shadows really just three areas in here. It's kind of like the levels control, except that it divides the midtones into two parts, brightness and contrast. So there you go, that's how you use this tool, and it does a pretty good job. You can you know, do a real nice job in here and actually improve the looks of your image quite a bit by adjusting these sliders. Let's just cancel this one out now, and let's take a look at the control over in Elements Plus, which is a plugin they can get it's fairly inexpensive and let's take a look at that now when you install that plug in the elements plus plugin you'll see it either here on the effects button and it's our first one right up here on the list elements plus and the very first option here is the color and tone that's the one you want or go over to the file menu come down to automation tools color and tone right there little little e plus these are all the elements plus tools in here so there's a little color and tone right there so same thing I'll just click on the nice big icon here for that. Under color and tone, you want the one here that says curves, right there. So just double click on that, and this brings up the curves control. Now it says new layer here, 
I found that it helps to just give it a moment before you click on OK. And then click on OK and you should see this different kind of curve control. Let me switch over here to the layers. Click on layers and make sure you're seeing this layer up here where it says curves. Sometimes I found when I launch this tool it doesn't give me that new layer. So give it a moment if you don't see the new layer cancel it out start over again to relaunch this and make sure you get that new curves layer. On the curves layer here notice over here right hand side is kind of a pencil with a strike through. That means that this is not editable after you have finished making your adjustments. A lot of these adjustment layers you can go back into it by double clicking on this icon right there. You can't do that with this particular curves tool. So once you're done with your adjustment you're set. But it does come in as an adjustment layer which means you can show or hide this adjustment which is a nice feature. You don't really get this feature using the enhance option over there. But in that case you could if you want to just make a copy of your background and make your adjustment on your copy of your background kind of protects it that way. But I like having it as an adjustment layer. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take a look through this that we have. First off, there are presets. These are the exact same presets that you saw over there on the standard control. Backlit, darken highlights, increase contrast, increase midtones, and so forth. Let's go ahead and increase our midtones. So there's the increased midtone. You already see one nice thing about this. We have a much bigger picture to look at here when making our adjustment. This is about you know twice as big height and width on our adjustments. It makes it much, much easier. Also, when you make this adjustment, you can see the curve adjustment here and you can adjust the curve adjustments. You can really use these as a starting point, an easy starting point to go ahead and make those adjustments. Let's put this back to its default again. There we go. Over here, you have the edit points on your curve. We'll see those come in or you can draw your own curve. I, I never really draw my own curve. It's really kind of a messy way to go about it, but it's there if you like to, but I'll just leave that one alone. We have two scales here, output and input. And they work a little bit differently. The input, notice we're black over here to white on the right hand side. If I pull this to the right, I am moving the black point further into the values of my image. This is the values of the image in here. Black values to white values. So I'm pulling my black point further into the values, which means that I'm converting these gray values into pure black. Basically, I'm darkening down the blacks by doing that making them darker. And if I pull this little line here up, it's just kind of, kind of a funny crosshair thing there, a little arrows. If I pull that up, I can actually lighten up the blacks. So I can push the blacks further up in value. So you can darken things down or lighten them up by using this control. And that's moving this bottom left hand corner. Same thing for the right side. I can lighten the whites up by pulling this in, it moves the white point further into the image. In this case, it makes her highlights brighter and her eyes whiter by doing that. Notice up here that top point is moving in as I do that. The histogram here shows the values in the image. And by moving this in and moving the white point further into those real light, light, light grays and making the real light, light, light gray actually white. I can do the same thing in here. I can darken them down by pulling this down. So you have a lot of control in here by moving this line around. We'll do more of this in just a moment. Let's go ahead and finish walking our way through. Now this little thing down here, this always crashes this program on me, so I don't touch that. And you'll find a few things in here don't really work, like the options in here and the auto option. I'll click on this auto. You get this thing up here. That's because this dialog box is actually pulled from the Photoshop program and not the Photoshop Elements program. We're using a Photoshop tool here inside of Photoshop Elements so some of these things don't really work properly. Like auto and options don't work properly. Just ignore those. But that's fine. Now down below here, again ignore that as well, we have these little eyedroppers. And these are really nice. Real nice tool in here. If you happen to have a black spot in your picture that you know is actually black, you can click on it with this black eyedropper and that will set the white values for your picture based upon that black. If you have something in your picture that actually is a gray, you, you know it's a gray, you can click on this, it will set again your white balance, or white balance your image based upon that gray 
Same thing for this one. If you have something which you know is white, you can click on this and that will then balance it out. Now, the only thing in here that I know is white is maybe that highlight right in there, but it's so small, it'll be real hard to hit that. And there will be other colors in there as well, so I probably couldn't get a good white balance off of that. I don't think that her eyelashes are actually pure black, so I don't want to do a black balance there. I don't see any actual grays in here anywhere, and I don't know if these are true blacks or not up here, so I'm not going to be using these controls. But if you have those, if you have pure black, pure gray, or pure white in your image, you can use these to set your white point for that. Now, there are some options down below here. You can set this for light values or pigment ink percentages. I never bother with that. That's really more of a Photoshop thing as opposed to an Elmas thing. Channel overlays. Now, if we set a, a, a white balance in here, you may see different color lines shifting in here. And those will be your different color channels. You can't really do a whole lot with that, but they'll be in there. And this will actually show that. But you don't really need that. Histogram is this gray thing in here showing the values of your image. There's no reason to hide that, so always leave that going. And the intersection line here and baseline sometimes will help. I just leave all these things showing and don't worry about that. So this you know, over here, this is mostly stuff for or that's more appropriate for Photoshop and not elements, except for the histogram. Make sure that's always shown because I really want to see what your values are. This little thing here changes that grid. You can either go for a small grid or a large grid. It's up to you. I've never really had any need for either grid. Okay, so there we go. That's what those display options are. So, as you can see, we do have our standard adjustments up here. Some of these things don't work in Elements. They would work over in Photoshop, like that and like this. Some things aren't really needed. And we do have these real nice color white balance tools. So there's more here than over in the standard curves tool that comes with Photoshop Elements. Let's say this thing works now. Say I wanted to do my adjustments. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to darken down my blacks a bit. It's the first thing I did. So I'll pull this bottom control over to the right a little bit and that darkens down the blacks. It pulls the pure black further into my dark grays, darkening down the black areas. And that just, again, just helps to pop her out of that background. Now I also wanted to darken down the mid-tone values in here and lighten up the highlights. You can do the highlights, of course, just by moving this control here in a little bit. That brightens the highlights up. So as you pull these in, it gets your picture gets a bit more contrasty. You can do contrast on the dark side, contrast on the light side. Now for the fun part about this, the curve is actually controllable in here. I'm going to click right here in the middle. It gives me a control point. I'll click down here. It gives me a control point there. I'll click up here. It gives me a control point right there. This point is controlling the values of my mid to dark tones. These are my actual mid tones right here. These are my mid to light tones and my highlights. So I now can control those separately. And as we saw before, if we move this left or right, I can darken it down or lighten it up. If I move it up and down, same thing, same kind of option. So I can use this to move around the values in the back. These are my dark values. I'm going to pull this down a bit further. So it's kind of darkening down the values in the in the back in there. I want to darken down my mid-tones. Here's the mid-tone. I'll pull that down just a little bit. Just pull it straight down like that. And that darkens those down a little bit to the right maybe. And maybe like right there, I think. Let's just go left. That's not too good. I like it right in there. So I've darkened down my mid-tone values. And then let's lighten up our mid to light values in here just a bit just like that so that kind of mimics what you could do over there in the other control now the nice thing about this is you can even be more specific than this if you want to have even more control I'm going to do another dot right down there so I can darken down my my dark darks in here and leave kind of the medium darks alone. Or I can lighten the medium darks up and 
really adjust those very, very specifically. Notice how it, it kind of moves us as it curves. It's always blending these in to make a nice, even, and smooth transition. It's one of the nice things about this tool. Okay, so there we go. Just a little bit of an adjustment in there. And we've now really improved this picture, I think, by using this curves control. I'll just choose OK on that one. And there it is before, and there it is after. There we go. Let's go ahead and do another one. I'm going to hide this. I'll take this background. Let's make a copy of that background. There we go. I'll put this above. There we go. So I have above this set down here. So this set is the elements plus controls. And on this one, let's do the standard controls here. Adjust color. Adjust color curves. And again, I wanted to darken my shadows down a little bit. Kind of like that. Increase my midtone contrast just a touch. And bring the midtones down a little bit. Notice in here that this middle control is the one that's moving. And let's bring our highlights up a little bit. See, this is actually moving the mid highlight up. It's not moving our highlight point up there, it's moving our mid highlight. That looks pretty close and choose OK. So there is our adjustment using the default tool. Here is the one that I adjusted using the Elements Plus and you can see I have more control over that background with the Elements Plus. The girl is pretty close. Just a little bit more contrasty on the Elements Plus version but much better control over the background values. I could really use that or move that medium dark and of course I could adjust that dark point which I couldn't do with the standard tool. So there you go. That's how to use those two different color curve adjustments. The first one of course is the enhance. And we get back on it later you can actually see. There we go. Enhance, adjust color, and adjust color curves. This is the default one that comes with Adobe Photoshop Elements. And the other one is the one that comes with the Elements Plus plugin and that's right here and curves that tool right there. Don't forget to look at my complete training courses for Photoshop Elements. You'll find the link right down there in the description and I have different versions for the different versions of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.